subtalar reorientation arthrodesis. This exercise demonstrates the subtalar reorientation and arthrodesis of a painful non-functioning subtalar joint. The patient lies on his left side. The body is held in place with three buttresses at the sternum, the thoracolumbar spine, and the pubic bone. The right posterior iliac crest is free and has been prepped. A sterile tourniquet is placed around the thigh. This is the posterolateral aspect of the right foot. Here is the lateral malleolus. And this is the heel cord. The incision is straight, slightly lateral to the heel cord, and about 10 centimeters long. On the medial aspect, the neurovascular bundle is visible. Lateral, the tibial nerve. And more medial, the posterior tibial artery. The periosteal elevator is used gently to lift away the neurovascular bundle from the bony surface so that a small bone lever can be placed on the medial aspect of the subtalar joint. Another bone lever is placed beneath the lateral malleolus. An arthrotomy of the subtalar joint is performed and the capsule is removed. The posterior fibulotalar ligament is also removed, leaving the subtalar joint free. The posterior facet is irregular and has a longitudinal step on the joint surface. A distractor is applied to the medial aspect of the lower leg from the tibia to the calcaneus. Distraction provides an excellent view into the posterior subtalar space. Using a chisel or an osteotome, bony and cartilaginous debridement is performed on the calcaneus. Debridement is also carried out on the talus. All the osteophytes and scar tissue must be removed. Deep within the joint, the articular surface of the navicular bone can be seen, as well as the tailor head. A bone spreader is placed at the lateral edge of the subtalar space for over-distraction. A tricortical bone block is used, which was harvested from the posterior pelvic crest at the level of the sacroiliac joint. The definitive measurements are taken for the bone block to be interpenated. The block is trimmed using the oscillating saw. The result is a trapezoid. The block is introduced into the prepared space. It is impacted using a cancellous bone impactor and a hammer. The bone spreader is removed and final impaction is carried out.
the axis of the hind foot has to be under constant control as distraction is released. A 1.6 mm K wire is placed percutaneously from the calcaneus to the talus to keep the bone block in place. A second K wire is used to check that the first one does not cross the ankle joint. A stab incision is made in the heel. The drill guide is inserted through the stab incision. Using a long 3.5 mm drill, a hole is drilled from the calcaneus to the talar dome through the bone block. The depth is measured. A 6.5 mm cancellous bone screw with a short thread is inserted using the air drive. The final tightening is done by hand. Slightly anterior to the tip of the lateral malleolus, a stab incision is made in the lateral edge of the foot. The drill guide is introduced. Using the 3.5 mm drill bit, a hole is drilled from the anterior process of the calcaneus to the neck of the talus. The depth is measured. A second 6.5 mm cancellous bone screw with short thread is inserted. Once again, tightening is done by hand. The K-wire and the shant screw are removed. The integrity of the neurovascular bundle and the reconstruction is checked. After removal of the foam, the exact osteoarticular orientation of the heel is checked. The orientation of the talus and the position of the anterior calcaneotalar compression screw are also checked. The AP view shows that there is no fibulocalcaneal impingement. Summary. The main aim, to correctly orient the heel in relation to the talus and the lower leg. Posterior screw. If the bone block is safe, a lag screw with a short thread is used. If the bone block is fragile, a position screw with a full thread is necessary. The anterior screw is a lag screw with a short thread.